I really like making nachos, but I hate grating cheese. Especially with these old funky cheese graters, I always feel like I'm going to cut my fingers and make some funky nachos. And I don't know about you, but I don't want any funky nachos. So I got this really cool cheese grater. Let me show you how this thing works. It's got a base here with a suction cup on it. And then it's got a lever here to attach it down to the counter so it won't move. And then it's got a slider here. You slide this in like that. And then it's got the cheese grater that goes inside so you don't have to touch it with your hands. You push it in here. And then you got a clamp on the back where you can lock it. So you could just crank your cheese. You just feed your cheese down here. You lock it in place so it doesn't move. You feed your cheese down here and you got a cup here to push the cheese in. And then you can just grate it like that. Much better than using one of these because once you start to get down, you take a chance of uh, slicing off some pieces of your finger. <laughs> and we don't want that. Yeah, if you like eating nachos as much as I do, you want to get yourself one of these cheese graters. I'll have some Amazon affiliate links in the description if you want to check them out. All right, let's get out some cheese and I'll show you how this cheese grater works. So we're going to start by cutting this block of cheese down to size. It's a little big to fit through here, so we need to cut it down in some smaller, more manageable pieces. That looks pretty good right there. Cut a couple pieces here for our nachos. And that way we'll have a little extra. Put the rest of this cheese back in the bag and save it for later. Alright, so let's see if these will fit. Yeah, they look like they're just the right size to fit in there. Alright, let's grate some cheese. So this thing has a lever on it right here. And a suction cup on the bottom. And when you crank the lever down, it locks it in place so it's not going to slide around on you. And then it's got a crank back here. And then it's got a lid here that goes in. You use this to push in. I don't know if you really call this a lid, more like a wedge. You use this to push in the cheese. It seems to work best if you put a bag on the other end here. And fold the bag down a little bit like that. The bag looks like this here. You fold it down that way and then the cheese will just fall right in there. Put your block of cheese in there and you use this little wedge here to push it down. And you adjust your bag as you go. And then if you don't want to, you don't want to put your fingers in there because then that's no different than using the cheese grater. But the cool thing about this setup is you can just take a spoon and you can go in here and you can spoon out the cheese. So you don't have to stick your finger in there. And then you can get back to shredding cheese. And it's also, the other advantage to this, it's a good idea not to touch the cheese with your hands. You want to touch the cheese with your hands as little as possible because that can uh, lead to uh, the cheese molding. So, you know, use clean hands and touch it as little as possible and that'll help your cheese last longer. Once it starts to build up in there, you just kind of got to move it around a little bit. That's pretty good. I mean, that's quite a bit of cheese for a fraction of the price, too. Shredded cheese is a lot more expensive than a brick of cheese. And 
plus they add some additives to the cheese, some different flour or uh, corn meal or something, or corn starch, all different kinds of things to keep it from sticking together. And then when you're done with it, there's a button you push right here. Well here, we'll do this first. Lift it up to unsuction it. And then there's a button here you push. And that will detach the handle. And then you can just push this out here. Shake off any extra cheese and then you can just wash this with a scrub brush. And you can use your spoon here to get out that little bit of extra cheese that got stuck in there. We'll put that on the nachos, that won't hurt anything. Alright, I got some tortilla chips laid out on a baking sheet and I put on some parchment paper. The advantage of the parchment paper is it will prevent the cheese from sticking to the pan and it'll be a lot easier to clean it up. And then I also got some jalapenos from our garden. My wife pickled up these jalapenos, so these are pretty good. If you've never had uh, home pickled jalapenos, you got to watch out because they're a little bit hotter than the ones from the store, so you want to go easy on them. All right, here's our bag of cheese. Let's dump some cheese on here. I think that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and spread this around a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. We got plenty of it. Alright, we'll put our homemade jalapenos on here from our garden. And like I said, go easy. If you haven't had these before, go easy on them. Maybe a few red ones in there too. The red ones are a little sweeter. All right, we want to spread these out. We cooked a roast in our slow cooker, so we have some leftover roast here. I'm going to go ahead and put some of that on here. Be our shredded beef. Kind of pull that apart and put that on here. Maybe a little bit more. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we'll just go ahead and put this in the oven for maybe about five minutes and it should be ready to go. All right, it's beeping. We'll see, it hasn't quite got up to 350 yet. We'll check it out. It looks pretty good. It looks like it's boiling. Yeah, I think this video is pretty much over. I'm going to eat some nachos now. Mm-mm-mm, that sure does look good.